Hello. In this video, I will be talking about the myths surrounding cholesterol, why eating saturated fat is healthy, why sugar is more problematic than the cholesterol, and more often than not, statins are both harmful and unnecessary. The general concept that I come across is that too much cholesterol is bad for you. It builds up in your arteries, obstructs your blood flow, and eventually weakens your heart. Human beings need cholesterol. In the body, this waxy substance helps in the formation of cell membranes and it is used to produce hormones like testosterone and estrogen and it also supports digestion. So why does cholesterol get such a bad name? To answer this, we will need to revisit a nutritional controversy from the mid 20th century. The key player was a young biologist named Ansel Keys who had formulated a theory where he argued that too much of fat in the diet raises cholesterol levels and before he could be proved right, health bodies across the US were soon warning everyone to cut down on fat. There were a number of problems with this research and his famous 7 country study showed that the nations that ate more fat also experienced more heart disease. Keyes actually had access to data on 22 countries and not 7, and those which he excluded from the study painted an entirely different picture. There was no correlation whatsoever and something other than fat consumption was at play. Then there was Dr. John Utkins who was a British doctor and a nutritionist and he was skeptical of Keyes finding. So he decided to carry out a similar study himself but he made sure to include far more data than Keyes had. When Utkin analyzed the numbers he found that there was indeed a single dietary factor which was strongly associated with the heart disease but it wasn't fat, it was sugar. Unfortunately, the work of scientists like Utkin was disregarded and Keyes attack on the fat went mainstream. Maybe you have heard that not all cholesterol is bad. If you have ever had your blood checked by a doctor, they might have told you that HDL cholesterol is actually good for you and it's the LDL cholesterol that is bad. What distinguishes these two types of cholesterol is the density of the proteins that they are made up of. HDL stands for high density and LDL stands for low density lipoproteins and according to some, we just need to raise our good HDL levels while lowering our levels of bad HDL. But it's wrong. Simply put, HDL and LDL cholesterol are outdated measures of the cardiovascular health. Focusing solely on LDL and HDL levels will lead out some significant details. More important than the levels of HDL and LDL is the question of what subtypes of the cholesterol is made up of. This means that some good HDL cholesterol can actually be bad for you and that some bad HDL cholesterol can be totally harmless. What measures is the type of HDL and LDL in your blood? A subtype of HDL cholesterol called HDL2 is indeed good for you. It travels as large protective molecules that causes fewer problems. But HDL3, another subtype is often dangerous. A subtype of HDL cholesterol called HDL2 is indeed good for you. It travels as a large protective molecules that cause few problems. But HDL3, another subtype is often dangerous. Unlike HDL2, HDL3 takes the form of small and dense molecules that sometimes lead to harmful inflammation. LDL cholesterol, the bad one, also needs to be reconsidered. A subtype called LDLA is normally totally harmless. LDLB and LPA on the other hand are both bad subtypes of LDL cholesterol. Over time they can lead to atherosclerosis that is the build up of gunk on your artery walls. There is no good reason to avoid eating saturated fat. Some people think that saturated fat can block your arteries. It might surprise you to learn that this has never been proven. The argument against saturated fat rests on the idea that LDL cholesterol is always a bad thing and as discussed that science no longer supports. In fact, saturated fat can actually be very beneficial 
uh, on the cholesterol in your body. When we consume saturated fat, the level of harmful dense cholesterol molecules in our bloodstream decreases and our levels of large protective molecules go up. It is a sugar that is far more dangerous than the fat. Sugar can be bad for our health because of the way it interacts with the hormone called insulin. Insulin works in with a hormone called glucagon to keep our blood sugar levels in the order. Given an ideal diet, the two hormones will cooperate and keep each other in a kind of healthy balance. The problem is that we reduce the effectiveness of insulin when we consume too much sugar. To maintain healthy blood sugar levels, our over-sugared bodies produce more insulin and this in turn leads to an elevated level of insulin in our bloodstream. The effect of increased insulin are raised triglycerides and increased glycation. And unlike all over cholesterol levels, triglycerides are a fairly reliable measure of cardiovascular health. In general, the lower the triglycerides, the better. Glycation is one of the processes that turn benign form of LDL into dangerous kind. In glycation, excess sugar binds to LDL cholesterol, making it more likely to obstruct your arteries. There is a complete book by Dr. John Yudkin named Pure, White and Deadly that one must read to learn about the side effects of the sugar. Another important point one can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease is by reducing the stress. Before we get into the details, let me clear that stress is not always a bad thing. In fact, it was often beneficial for our ancestors. If you are roaming in the Africa savanna and you suddenly spy a lion, an acute dose of the fight or the flight hormones called cortisol and adrenaline might just be what you need to run to a safe distance. But nowadays, we suffer from a stress day in, day out. Work is stressful, social media is stressful, modern life is stressful and since we can't simply outrun these things, our stress becomes chronic and our heart pays the price. Excessive amount of cortisol in the bloodstream can cause arteries to harden, making us more vulnerable to heart attacks and arrhythmias. When this happens, we have essentially overdosed on our own stress hormones. Next, I will talk about statins. More often than not, statins are both harmful and unnecessary. Statins are designed to lower the level of cholesterol in the body, but we depend on the cholesterol for number of vital functions including production of sex hormones and bile. And while it is true that statins can sometimes be helpful, it seems that any good that they do derive from their anti-inflammatory properties and not from their cholesterol lowering effects. One of the most alarming consequences of decreasing the cholesterol in the body is the depletion of coenzyme Q10. This coenzyme is an important nutrient that helps the body maintain coronary health. A deficiency can lead to fatigue, weakness and severe muscle pain. In fact, the side effects of depleting this nutrient are often worse than the cardiovascular symptoms that statin is meant to tackle in most of, most of the cases. The disadvantages of taking statins vastly outweigh their benefit and in all cases statins are a gamble. That's all for this video. If anyone wishes to read more on this, there is a complete book on it, The Great Cholesterol Myth, Why Lowering Your Cholesterol Will Not Prevent Heart Disease and a Statin Free Plan That Will. This is a book by Johnny Borden and Stephen Sinatra. Best wishes.